So now in this next flowchart, what we're going to be understanding here is the idea of detecting and responding to a stimulus on a greater, more uh, detailed scale. And that's going to be broadly referred to as the idea of nervous system and S information, just write info, processing. When you want to detect a stimulus and respond to the stimulus, what's happening is information processing within the nervous system. This process is going to be highlighted on figure 48.4. Now, in order for information processing to happen in the nervous system, there are going to be three distinct stages of this process. Again, the goal here is to detect the stimulus and to the respond to the stimulus. Now, let's see how these three stages do just that, specifically in regards to nervous system function. So, number one, the first step in this process of information processing is referred to as sensory input. This needs to happen. This is the first thing that starts everything. Sensory input is simply a fancy way of saying detecting a stimulus. So detecting stimulus. That's when something from the senses has been input to this pro info processing system. Specifically how this happens is via a sensory neuron. A sensory neuron does exactly what its name suggests. It senses things. But here we're going to actually call it specifically an afferent neuron. An afferent neuron is a sensory neuron. Now be careful here because we will later see something called an efferent neuron. Starts with an E that sounds strikingly similar but has the exact opposite function. Okay, so this is the one place where I think naming uh, biologists really messed up and really confused people with the afferent versus efferent. Hopefully we'll try to keep that distinction very obvious as we go through this lecture. Okay, so what is an afferent neuron? What does it mean to be a sensory neuron? The whole purpose of these neurons is to receive sensory stimuli. That's what they're good at. They can see or feel, sense it, they can sense things like stimuli, and they receive it. That's why they are called sensory or afferent neurons. Now, the purpose of this is not to just receive it. This is useless. We have to eventually respond to this stimulus. We've detected it, sure, but we've got to go all the way to a response. How can we get there? In order to get there, not only do sensory or afferent neurons receive the stimuli, but what they're going to do is conduct it. They're going to move it. They're going to push it forward. They're going to conduct whatever the information that has been received. They're going to conduct that info towards a processing center. So that's our first time seeing something called a processing center. Conduct just means move towards. And now this idea of going to a processing center is going to be the beginning essentially of the next step, which is called integration. And that's what we'll look at in step two. So step two is referred to exactly that as integration. So what I want you to think of when we see a sensory input or understand the detecting of a stimulus is let's say your hand touches a hot surface. Your body, your afferent neurons are basically going to sense that this is a hot surface. That's the stimulus. That's what's been received. That hot stimulus message essentially will be conducted towards a very important processing center. Something that can take this information and understand what it is and hopefully conduct some sort of response to that message of, hey, I'm touching something very hot. So let's see what happens at that processing center. That process is called integration. Here what we're going to see is the following. I like to think of this as the time where sensory input aka hot surface, that message is sorted out. Because basically when that hot surface is touched, it is meaningless unless it's integrated, unless it is sorted out, unless it is correctly interpreted as something that's hot by the info processing center. Okay, It has to be interpreted in this processing center. Usually this processing center, 
is going to be the brain, but sometimes it may not necessarily be the brain. We'll talk about that type of feedback loop in the next lecture, but for right now, just call it a general processing center. And basically, this processing center will ask questions like, okay, so now that I've got something, this message from an afferent neuron, was that message a visual message? Was it something that I just saw? Was that an auditory message? When you're listening to me, there are sensory afferent neurons that are being sent to a processing center in your brain that are going to detect and understand and integrate and interpret and sort out that what I'm doing right now is talking and you're doing something called listening. Now, the question will be, what do you do? Now what? Once you figured out that this is an auditory message, that I'm speaking to you, or this is a visual message that you're seeing me right on the screen, what's going to happen now? Well, what you're going to need to utilize for this process of integration, first of all, are things specifically called interneurons, very perfectly named. If you think of the human brain, the human brain, as I said before, is basically the number one info processing center within our body. 90% of the human brain, 90% of it, is going to be interneurons. Okay? They are there to interpret messages from the senses, from the afferent neurons that arrive to the brain. Okay? So once that integration has happened, we're going to now result in a response. Remember the key idea of info processing, the key idea of nervous system as a whole is to detect stimulus, then I should also say to interpret stimulus, and then to respond to stimulus, and that's stage three. Stage three is referred to as a motor output. Okay? Sensory input, something has entered the system, that is the nervous system, it was processed and integrated in the brain usually, and now there's going to be a specific motor output response. Essentially, the motor output is the answer to this question. What is the appropriate response? What is the appropriate response, but specifically to the stimulus, whatever the stimulus was, okay? What is the appropriate response to the stimulus? Now, here, what we're going to understand is that in order for a response to happen, let's say to move your hand away from that hot stove or whatever it was, that's going to utilize something called a motor neuron. A motor neuron is going to be something that's referred to as, and here comes the confusion, an efferent neuron. Something that completes an action or an effect. Okay? Now, as we'll see, let me put this in the context of a situation or a stepwise progression of a motor output. So, what's going to happen is you're going to have information that's transmitted. So, you transmit information from the processing center, info from the processing center. So, the brain is going to have a certain message and it will be transmitted from the brain, from the processing center, um, and it will associate with the appropriate responses, like moving the hand away. That's an appropriate response if you're feeling something that's very, very hot. So it will associate with appropriate responses And when that appropriate response has been figured out, once the brain has realized what you're supposed to do, it will then send a message. That message will continue forward to the appropriate effector. Not a effector, but in this situation, it's the appropriate effector. Effector. And an appropriate effector the effect is going to happen. The motor output will happen via an effector's response to stimulus. This is simply going to be the part of the organism that produces a response. And we've talked about this before when we briefly went over the idea that we need to detect a stimulus and then respond to stimulus, produce the response. Things that are good at that are, for example, muscles and glands do a great job of understanding what the brain wants to do and then doing what the brain says. 
moving away from the hot stove or secreting a certain hormone based off of a certain cue that went through the same exact information processing pathway. Notice the name now. It's called information processing. Information doesn't just enter the brain. It has to be processed correctly. It has to be input by an afferent neuron. It has to be sensed by an afferent neuron and it has to be conducted towards the brain. Once there, it has to be interpreted as a whatever the message may be, a visual message, an auditory message, a dangerous message, a safe message, a funny message, whatever it may be, it will be interpreted by the brain and the 90% of neurons that it has devoted to that, and then the brain will send out an appropriate motor response. But the brain's not the thing that's going to move away, it's your hand. But how can your hand move away unless it has the correct motor neuron effector, efferent neuron message sent to it via this effector response that's appropriate for the situation. That's our basic look at the information processing pathway. Basically, you must understand that it goes from a sensory input happens that will be integrated and then a motor output will result. That's the overall pathway. Be able to understand the details associated with it. Take a look at figure 48.4 to really understand this at more of a visual scale. Now that we have a good understanding of how nervous system basically does what it does, we're going to get to the nitty gritty details that are associated with the thing that governs basically this, the one, two, three steps of info processing, and that's an action potential. In order to understand that, we have to look at something called membrane potential.